Hi, everybody. Welcome. Thank you for having me here. And thank you for everyone for joining us today. This panel will be recorded, as Gina said, and to protect your privacy, we will spotlight the speakers. And in addition, we ask that you please keep your cameras off if you do not want to be recorded. We also ask you that today you actively listen, and we hope that today's conversations will give you a few highlights or nuggets to take away. So let's get started. My name is Zim Neubert, and I'm with Project Cornerstone of the YMCA of Silicon Valley, and I'll be moderate, moderating today's panel. Thank you so much, parents, for being a part of our panel. Please introduce yourselves by stating your name and the ages of your children. Uh, so my name is David, uh, and I have three children, two boys and a girl, and they are 14, 13, and 11 years old, respectively. Welcome, David. Hi, good morning. My name is Hilda Dominguez, and um, I have two kids in elementary. My daughter, she's eight years old, and she's in third grade. And my son, he's a 10-year-old, and he's in fifth grade. Thank you. Welcome, Hilda. Hello, I'm Julie Tate Judge, and my son is a fourth grader, and he's 10 years old. Okay, thank you. Welcome, Julie. Good morning, everyone. It's such an honor to be here today on a Saturday morning. Um, first off, I want to tell many thanks to our teachers, educators, and also all the SCOE staff for putting together this event to allow us, the parents, to voice our opinions. I have my mask on. I hope everyone can hear me okay because I'm currently at a um, vaccination site. So bear with me. <laughs> um, so my name is Shirley and I have two children. Uh, ages of eight, who is currently attending second grade, and another uh, is five. She's in TK. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, Shirley, and thank you so much for all that you're doing. And we can hear you just fine with the mask on. Hopefully you can talk and breathe for this whole time. Thank you again. So at this time, we'd like to start with an activity we call reverse panel to hear from the educators in the room. In the room. The intent is to share ideas and perhaps pick up a few more nuggets of information. So we'd like to share this quote on the screen. Let me share with you first. And forgive me if it's a little bit clunky because I have multiple screens, which is great. And then sometimes it's, there we go. This should work. Do you see the quote? It's on the right. I'll read it out loud to you. Students will not have the internal energy for learning and growth if their safety and belonging needs are not met first. I'll read it one more time. Students will not have the internal ener energy for learning and growth if their safety and belonging needs are not met first. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I think, Gina, you tell me if we change it depending how many people are in the group here. Um, we're going to put you into breakout rooms for just about five minutes. And we want you to keep this quote in mind. Consider this quote in mind while answering the prompt on the left to reflect and share. What is one thing you have started or continued or stopped doing to address your students' feelings of belonging so that they feel safe, cared for, and heard in order to learn and thrive? And we'll have that um, prompt in the chat, right, Gina? That will help as a visual. So another way to phrase this prompt is with this quote in mind, what are you doing that's working? That's probably what you wanna continue doing. What's not working that you might wanna stop doing? And what's something new or old you might want to start doing? Okay, we'll use a Padlet app. Now, this is my first time using Padlet app, so be patient with me. We'll share the link to the Padlet, um, Padlet in the chat. And then please write your responses on the sticky notes, right? And that'll help me sort them out, but please one idea per response so I can sort them in a better way. And of course you can use as many post-it notes as you want. I'll attempt to group them by moving them into categories. So please, once you write your notes, please don't move them around because that'll really confuse me. <laughs> so I'm gonna try my best, growth mindset. So Gina, should we go to um, breakout rooms at this time then? 
we're, I'm going to put you in breakout rooms and I just realized I'm going to have, I'm doing some changing. So I'm just going to tell you right now, if you're a panelist, you're going to go into a breakout room, but you're all in a room together. And so you can pull yourself out and come back out. But every, for everybody else, you're going to be in a breakout room with either two or three people. So I'm going to set the rooms for five minutes with a 30 second countdown. And then we will come back and I'll see you in five minutes. Awesome. All right, here we go. Great, welcome back everybody. Um, I didn't see, oh, I th only saw, let me go back to the Padlet, one comment, which makes it easier for me, but we were assuming that um, you guys are probably just enjoying your conversations and getting to know each other. And that's really what today is about is that relationship building, community building. So that's fine. I'm just gonna read the one that I saw. Um, so what's one thing you have started, continued or stopped doing to address your students' feelings of belonging? As a school board, we have instituted a grading for equity policy in San Jose Unified School District this year. That's great. And you're welcome to add more if you um, um, think of something else. But I'd like to maybe invite you to um, unmute and share. Does have to, anybody share something that was another positive thing that they'd like to continue doing? Thinking about that quote in mind for the our kids' um, social emotional well being. You couldn't have all been quiet in those rooms. Come on, I used to be a teacher. I could randomly, quote unquote, choose somebody. Charlotte, you have such a beautiful smile and I feel like you want to say something. What's something positive that you've done? Hello, I am Charlotte. Um, I am right now in a para role. I spoke with, I believe, let's see, Valea. Um, we both were making connections on how to make as a para, well, she was a previous para and I am currently a para, how to provide a safe environment emotionally for a student that is considered to be needing more support and how the children in the classroom can see them as being at their level. Um, I will say one thing that I took away was letting them speak for themselves and not speaking for them the entire time. Um, and also the comfort level of how they feel speaking for themselves and then checking in and out with each child. Um, challenges that I currently would say I'm having is explaining to other children how the person is still a person and they still are equal. I love it. Thank you. I just You're wrote welcome. some things as um, as you were talking, just in the chat, so you can kiss and see. You know, sharing po power with the kids, space for their voice, and what you're really kind of talking about is um, strengths versus deficit approach, right? And everybody has some qualities and strengths, and we need to help find find it for the kids, and then also to empower them, and so that other kids in the room can see them too. Great. I'm going to move on. Is that okay, Gina? Great. All right. Let's go back to here. Okay. Now we get to speak to our panelists. So thank you so much um, for um, participating in that activity. Just kind of get us dust off the cobwebs and get going on that, be thinking of that in, in our um, focus. So let's move on to our parent panel. The first question I'd like to ask, starting with David is, what is one positive thing that your school has done for you, your student or family that you really appreciate? Yeah, that's, that's a really good question. Um, I would have to say that the, the school has demonstrated uh, a very genuine uh, consideration for uh, the students' uh, well-being, their health and safety during this pandemic. Um, you know, obviously, when uh, there's protocols to be followed, both from the CDC and the Santa Clara uh, County uh, Health Department, um, you know, there's a lot of there's, there's a lot of written uh, you know words that need to be followed, protocol that needs to be followed. But 
uh, in addition to just uh, being compliant, uh, I would say that uh, we've noticed that uh, all of the teachers and staff share a genuine concern. And it's, it's more the way they go about implementing these things, um, you know, with, with the true sense of, of consideration and care. And, and that's greatly appreciated. Thank you, David. Yeah, I, that really sticks out, the, gen, the genuine, the authenticity, and just really, truly caring. Thank you. What about you, Hilda? Same question. What is one positive thing that your school has done for you, your student, or family that you appreciate? Um, for me, I think something that is very important is all the communication that has been coming for us, and uh, not only from the district, but from the school. And something very valuable is also the communication from the teacher, directly from the teacher. Um, you know, there's a lot of things going on outside. There's so many things to read, so much information that we have to digest. So uh, when the principal uh, sends the information and everything, we know that everything isn't just one source. It's much better and easy for us because it's just too much. So um, I do appreciate um, the time that they take to be clear and to really thoughtful and all the information that they have to give us. Yeah, I think there's a theme here, communication and support. Yeah, great. It's like a one-stop shop. I would love that too, right? To go to one place and get all your resources have, instead of having to vet everything yourself because we don't have enough time. Julie, what about you? What's one thing that you really appreciate that the school has done for you or your students, your family? I can echo what the other two panelists' um, parents said. And, and also, personally, my son had some anxiety coming back to school, to in-person school. And um, I was just so moved by the principals and the staff um, and our, um, his teacher, how, how caring, how genuinely caring and supportive they were of helping him with that transition. Um, even our, our front office staff are, um, are so nurturing. <laughs> he knows he can, he can go to them and, and, um, and get the support that he needs. So I, I, I'm the emotional, the, there's a big focus on social emotional in our district and in our school. Um, and that just has meant the world to, um, to our family. So I'm, I'm really, really grateful for that. Thank you, Julie. How about you, Shirley? What's one positive thing that your school has done for you, your student or family that you appreciate? I think for me, uh, I'm also piggybacking on all the parents have said, communications, because I do see that um, there's an increased communication between the schools and parents. Um, we're almost two years in pandemic so far, right? And I, I do want to acknowledge all the hard work that our school teachers have done for our little ones just to ensure there's minimal disruption to their learning as possible. So I think the way that they do it is through communications. So for example, schools, um, I do see that they have increased um, sending mass emails to us parents and then even updating their website um, consistently with um, even with community resources, right? Because now parents aren't allowed on campus. So we can't really go to the resource center there. And so they will you know, post everything, even bell schedules, lunch menus, everything are available on the website. And as from the teachers, um, we will receive all our student classwork sent home. And this way we can discuss with our children. And then sometimes I will also receive photos of classroom activities. And I feel that's how I can get involved. So thank you. I love it. Yeah, there's definitely a pattern of theme here, communication. Um, I, I hope you educators are really feeling what I'm feeling is that there's a great sense of gratitude for what you're doing, right? And, and you may not hear it enough, right? Teachers never hear it enough. Educators never hear it enough before pandemic or during pandemic. Um, and just at least for today, just take that in, right? There's a lot, it kind of makes me give, gives me goosebumps. So there's a lot of gratitude here. Um, and so keep doing what you're doing and we're, we're in there with you. Let's go to the next question. Hilda, let's start with you. Given the current and ever-changing circumstances with the pandemic, what would support from the school look like now for your family? As we continue on this roller coaster ride, what would support look like? Oh, I'm muted. Um, the support, what will my family still need? 
I'm sorry? Yeah, so for you, your family, your children, what would support look like now, given the current situation of the pandemic? I think they've done so it, much already, and what would you like them to, how else can they support you? If, um, I know this is not a wish list, so I hope it doesn't come sounds like that, but um, for in my specific case, uh, because we both, my husband and I, we both uh, work full time and uh, going to having to go back to the regular schedule, you know, at work and for school, the thing with school this year is that because of COVID, you know, there is a new normal, which is not exactly how things were before, meaning that the school doesn't open, you know, let's say 30 minutes before as they used to, and they don't stay open one hour or 30 minutes after, you know, classes. Now they just open right before class, they close, they close the gates right after class. So that is that is hard for many families that because we don't have uh, daycare, you know. So I think for my family, support will be having to be able to offer, you know, the resources that we used to have before to still have it, to still be able to come with that, like daycare activities after school, you know, programs, things that knowing that our kids are, are still safe and we still have time, you know, to get to school and do what we have to do. I think what you're saying is um, given, yeah, and I appreciate you saying it's not a wish list. I mean, it's maybe, you know, that we know that some things are out of educators' control, right? And if they could, they would. So what um, you want to keep maintain the routines and what are some creative ways though I would ask the educators, you know, to just to think and reflect and people on the board and who are here possibly on the board, um, what are some creative ways to maintain some resources even with COVID restrictions, right? We're a smart bunch of people. Maybe there's something we can do without having to open the doors an hour early, right? Um, how about Julie? What is, given the current situation with the pandemic, what would support from school look like now for you? Uh, I think I, I would um, say just to please keep the focus on the social emotional. Um, uh, our school has been doing some training with teachers on how to um, recognize regulation and co and co-regulation, um, uh, emotional regulation with students. And um, I know that uh, my, my sister's a teacher in Oakland um, eighth graders, and I know that there's just unpre unprecedented behavioral problems um, in school. Um, and so, um, you know, I, I'd love to see the teachers supported more uh, um, and, um, and to have some of that, um, it would be helpful to have some of what the teachers are learning as far as emotional regulation extended and communicated to the families. Um, that's in the works at our school, but I think that, um, you know, uh, learning to have some of those skills and have common language with the teachers about helping our kids regulate emotionally would be, um, would be really helpful. And for those of you in the room who can make some of those decisions or help, right? It starts with self. How do we support the teachers and educators first for self-care and how to manage for themselves and then teaching that to their kids. But then what Julie's saying is like extending that home so you can have that same tools and bag of tricks, right? Great. Shirley, how about you? What are, um, what's one thing you're, um, what is support, what would support look like right now given the current situation with the pandemic? I don't, for me, I don't think I have, I don't think I have an answer to, or even something tangible that I can ask um, from the school or all the educators to support us. Um, just like the question stated in itself, um, this pandemic, it just keep evolving, right? And just, it just keep trying to modify, you know, we, every minute we just try to modify and adapt to the changing circumstances. So um, I would say to just please continue collaborating with our local government um, or even to the state, um, uh, state and federal levels to find answers for our children, right? Uh, for our family. So then not only that we are providing um, a safe learning space, you know, with the protocol, but as well as, as a mental well-being for the family as a whole. Um, for example, I know for marginalized family, they can't afford to stay home to care for their mildly ill children that are not related to COVID too, but they can't, they have nowhere else to send their kids and they can't skip work. 
So I was just wondering if there are resources that we can come up with to sort of support these families to sort of um, mitigate their stress. Um, so yeah, I, I guess my I guess my ask is just please continue, do not give up. I know you guys are working hard, but please do not give up on us. Continue to come up with you know creative solutions uh, for our Great. children, for our family. So thank Great. you. Thank you, Shirley. How about you, David? Yeah, Given the current really situation. good question. Right. Uh, the, the operative word here, I guess, is the, uh, the, the focus on the ever-changing circumstances, right? Um, Omicron being a prime example. I, I would have to say that, you know, while we do have uh, a really, in my opinion, a very good program currently with the in-person schooling, just being prepared uh, to, to have to shift potentially to, to a distance learning type of model at some point, you know, should things take a, you know, a, a bad turn and, you know, maybe there's an outbreak or what have you, but, uh, you know, just having that um, a little bit of preparation ahead of time to, to be able to shift quickly to a, a uh, remote learning or distance learning type of model uh, to me would be a, a step that would, would be a helpful step, at least to have a, some sort of a roadmap or a plan in place for that. Um, you know, just because it, as we all found during the original onset of the pandemic, it caught a lot of educators and parents and everybody off guard, just being forced into that environment. So having a plan ahead of time for that would, would be a good idea. Right. Yeah. While keeping in mind that a lot of things are mandated by you know other things, right? There was federal, sure. state, county, um, district, and everything like that. But I, I love your idea. I think everybody should be better prepared now and having a backup plan just in case. Yeah. Julie, how about starting with you for our next question? And it's one, what is one thing your child's school could do to encourage a sense of belonging so students feel safe, cared for, or heard in order to learn and thrive? So it's kind of like what we asked. It is like what we asked everybody in the breakout rooms. We asked educators what they have been doing. But from the parent perspective, what is one thing you think the school could do to help benefit that mental health and social well-being, make your kids feel supported? Well, in the classroom, um, one of the things that that his teacher did during um, distance learning that was super meaningful and helpful was uh, that she did a mini check-in with every student during the week and hear me out. <laughs> I know I know the bandwidth for, for uh, teachers is really stretched, but um, she told us that, um, that just having that little mini check-in, uh, it, it saved her time in the long run because when she did have to deal with conflict or, um, or disruptive behavior, there was that established sense of safety and security with the student. Um, and you know, sometimes she couldn't do it every week for whatever reason, but it was something that my son counted on and, and, and it was something he looked forward to. Um, and um, when he did have problems, you know, I could say, oh, I could reflect back to him and say, well, remember your teacher genuinely cares about you because she spends this, <laughs> this time with you. And that would register, that would register with him. So, um, that's, yeah, that's thank great. You. Small things count. Just that smile, just that, you know, high, well, I, I, don't, I don't know, you're not allowed to high five, but air pump or something like that. Like, I see you, I, I how are you? You know, I miss when you're not here, right? Okay. Um, Shirley, what about you? What's one thing your child school could do to encourage a sense of belonging so that students feel safe, cared for, and heard so they can learn and thrive? Um, to me personally, I say um, to have our school continue amplifying not only on diversity, but also on inclusion. Um, I think our students would feel much, will be, will feel safe or even care for when parents are more involved in their schooling, right? And, uh, but however, I know there are many barriers for some parents of, they want to, they have the intention to, but they, they have the barriers too, right? And so, how can we make it more accessible, right? Especially for those underserved parents who want to, but do not have the resources on how. Um, so some examples that I want to applaud on the, the school of my children attending to, like prior to pandemic, they would invite parents to on campus to celebrate different um, cultural holidays. Um, they also send all the communications that they send home newsletters a lot in several languages. So they, I think those are really awesome, great. Um, and I do understand that school and teachers, as much as they want to create that 
inclusive learning space sometimes they're just um because this protocols and funding right that's what they're capped at so i guess it's just i guess again continue i guess continue you know fostering that environment with intentions so then our children can have a sense of belonging um, and thrive when their parents are more involved. So yeah, thank you. Great, great, thank you. And David, what about you? What's one thing your child school can do to encourage this sense of belonging? Well, you know, uh, kind of thinking outside of the box a little bit, um, one of the problems that the pandemic has, has thrust upon all the students uh, has been the ability to, to socialize or the lack thereof socialization. And so it occurred to me that if, if there were some additional like school sponsored forums or like a chat room or something, some, some sort of an outlet or, you know, some safe haven where, you know, kids could, could uh, join meetings like, you know, on Zoom or in some other type of a platform and, and be able to socialize with one another in a safe environment outside of your typical social media uh, platforms. So that that to me, if if there was if there was something that was school sponsored, it would uh, you know it would be an opportunity for, for all the students to to participate in this, and, and it would feel more like you know hanging out in class after class or socializing at school, but it would be in a safer electronic sort of environment, if you will. Great, more creative ideas needed. Yeah. Thank you. And Hilda, how about you? Something quick to... Um, I think uh, something just is just offering the students those opportunities, those spaces where they can do that. Yes, they were, I mean, for a year and a half, they've been behind a screen. And unfortunately, many of them also just following social media. Um, so I think just having those opportunities for them to relearn and practice, you know, the social skills, how to talk, how to respond when somebody is bothering me, when if there is bullying, you know, they because they've done it before, they just have to remember, you know, again and just practice again everything that that they know that is there. Yeah. So um, I think maybe I don't know, organize games during recess, bring in the older kids and um, maybe some training for the older kids. I don't know, having talks in class, uh, when reading a book, when sharing a book, just allow the students to share more and um, just just have, have the opportunities. Oh, uh, it's something very important. If we can bring the parents back, that would be awesome. You know, having caring adults in school, that is something that is very helpful for many kids. Yes, I think we're all striving for that, but yes, good to remember that. Okay, last question. Let's start with Shirley. Um, what is one thing you wish for your child's well-being? And is there a way that the school can help facilitate that progress? One thing I think I would say is to help our children build their resiliency. As, um, as evidently we see that this pandemic has been really testing us adults. <laughs> You know, pushing us, helping us to just you know strengthen our resiliency if it's a skill, right? And and so I think our children also need that just to prepare, right? Um, I really appreciate that that the, my children's school um, that they have is started introducing emotional literacy um, to the young learners. Um, so for example, my daughter who's in TK. So the whole kinder part, they have this um, the same type of plush toys where we should represent uh, an emotion. And I think that's a really creative, fun way to, to, to just, you know, introduce all these emotion vocabulary to our kids, just to just recognize it, right? Um, however, I do see there's a gap though. Once they're home, there might not be the same reinforcement from the parents. And so I'm just hoping that school can facilitate where, um, Maybe sending home some helpful tips. Or, no, very simple helpful tips where parents can continue supporting and then so then our children can progress in that social emotional learning aspect. Um, I know my time's up, but one more ask is, um, if, again, tying to resiliency is that schools should please continue just um, helping creating um, learning that promotes um, social emotional or more, appro more age appropriate continue even to our older kiddos um, in middle and high school. So thank you. Great. David, how about you? 
What's one thing you wish for for your child? Uh, I would have to, to say uh, continued uh, safety uh, for, you know, for the students. And that would be both, you know, physical and, you know, when, when in school, uh, there's already some good programs in place for, uh, you know, keeping kids safe. Um, but uh, just having some some other activities for them to participate in, um, you know, school sponsored activities uh, that, you know, can keep the kids occupied in a safe environment uh, so that, you know, they don't have a tendency to wander, if you will, or, you know, go to some other places that uh, could be um, harmful for them in some way. So just continuing to have some some safe um, physical and virtual uh, outlets for kids to, to take part in. Great, thank you. And Hilda, we're almost running out of time. So I wanna make sure we get oh, Hilda in. And Very quick, very quick. Okay, um, I'll say uh, just please take some time to connect with your kids, with the kids, because um, besides, you know, besides us, the parents, uh, teachers and school, they are the ones that spend most time with them. So um, definitely kids, they didn't, they're not, they didn't come back the same. So we might have kids that were super confident before COVID and now they're shy. We might have kids that were maybe bullies before and now they are kids that are in such a need of, you know, love and, and patient so um, nobody came back the same so just please please take some time to just connect with the kid uh, notice what is happening and communicate with us um, I think we as parents we are always open to help the teachers and to be there for for our kids thank you Julie why don't you wrap it up for us what is one thing you feel um, for my son um, uh, to see himself as a as a um, valuable part of his community is one of the things that um, that um, that I think is important, and uh, our school does a really good job of that. Uh, they they see they see him as a whole person, despite his learning challenges and his behavioral challenges that he had starting out in his education. Um, and um, our school has uh, PlayWorks, which is um, uh, a program that um, he's at, he got flagged to do in its junior coaching where he gets to go to the younger playground and um, and help with the younger kids. And so they recognize that despite his other challenges, he had some leadership skills and they pursued that and it gave him a sense of purpose and belonging and he looks forward to going to school. So seeing each child as, uh, it, seeing their strengths, I think is, is where I'm getting at, what I'm getting at. Great. Okay, Gina, I'm going to do this really quickly. Just, I know we're over, but I really kind of, I took down some notes and this is kind of what I um, see. Communication across the board. It's just everybody, communication, communication. Thank you so much. We appreciate it and please continue to do so, right? Um, compassion. Please see our children for who they are. Please see that um, we've all, they've all had a tough time, just like you have had a tough time, parents too, just please have that empathy is what comes up in my mind. You didn't say those words, but empathy, compassion. And I see a lot, and everybody mentioned it, whether they use the words SEL, social emotional learning or not, but it's the mental health. Um, it's the need to connect. It's the need to feel belong, that we belong, they belong, to feel valued. And that safe, safety, of course, follow the mandates, have a backup plan, um, be prepared. But really, creativity is another word that kept on coming up. Be creative, continue to collaborate with us and with um, you know, other entities and get all the guidelines and stuff, but help us figure out how we can teach kids and give them more space and activities at school, given the guidelines. Uh, think out of the box and then teach that to us parents at home communicate with us how we can support you so that it transfers because our kids spend so many hours of the day with you we need you right i think and along with that flexibility but help maintain the routines in, um, make everybody feel included keep uh, the main thing is keep doing what you were doing before covid and now it's even harder so bring it back we need to help exercise that muscle again that muscle of connectedness, the muscle of um, you know, engaging with people and little things count. So keep doing what you're doing. I wanna, did I pretty much capture it? Yeah, no, good job. 
I saw a heart somewhere from, from somebody. Thank you all for joining us. Parents, thank you for being open and brave and sharing your thoughts. It's clear yeah. that you thank, value. Thank, yeah, thanks to all the educators who yes. did today. Um, yeah, we, we truly appreciate you and what you do for our students, for our kids. Yes, it is clear to me that, you. You, that the parents value the schools and embrace the importance of building that school and family connection. And you gave us such valuable nuggets and examples, parents, um, of where you're coming from and helping us to think about it. And teachers, thank you. And educators, thank you for all that you do. This has been a tough year for everyone. I'm just gonna say one thing to you is that we know and appreciate all your incredible efforts to taking care of our kids, but, or and, I try not to use the word but so much, please don't forget to take care of yourself. So I leave you with to do well, we want you to be well. So reach out to your peers or you know your support system to the parents, it's both ways, right? To support one another. It's been a pleasure for me to be here with you. Before I go, I just wanna ask you to reflect, maybe listen to this recording later when it's ready. Reflect on what you've heard today and suggest that you commit to one action item, small or big. What's one thing you can do to continue this work? 